part of what makes LA great is that these strip malls are actually where restaurants can thrive. There are like 15 restaurants on this single block. And one of the best ones here is a place called Sanongan. And they specialize in these huge cauldrons of bubbling hot kalbichin. Oh my gosh, this dish is so amazing. There are piles of braised short ribs, rice cakes, potatoes, and of course, I'm joined by a professional carnivore, Mr. Nick Solares from New York City. If there's one place I bring people from out of town, this is it. And I'm super excited to have you try, I think, the ultimate Korean meat dish. That's not barbecue. Is this hulking pile of chicken short ribs. Well, listen, I, I have profound respect for the way that Koreans treat short ribs. Profound? Profound respect. Okay. <laughs> I love about these places is, yes, they're meaty, but also there's a conviviality that you get in a Korean restaurant. I mean, like, no before you know it, like, they're like, sharing soju with the next table, or like, these guys are like, helping you with their short, you know, it's like, there's something really sort of culturally rewarding about eating. Like, right? you can't even, you can't order this thing for yourself. It is, it, well, it's so, automatically oh, performed. Oh, 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 I mean, okay, one. <laughs> Think about this place, they literally go through thousands of pounds of meat a week. Literal Just your style. Tons. Yeah, literal, literal tons. tons. Yes, literal tons of meat. When you go to Korea, if you order kalibuchim, it can, you know, they, they try to doctor it up so that it looks like a lot, but it's usually like four little pieces and it's a hundred dollars. But in right. America, because we're in America and we do it big, they they can serve you basically like a five hundred dollar portion in Korea, but it's like sixty bucks here. What they do here that I like is that they don't just put a little bit of vegetables in there. They put some potatoes and some carrots. They also put some rice cakes in there that Love soften rice up. Cakes. Tell me a little bit about short rib, the cut itself. It is a piece that really comes from right underneath the rib section, which is where prime rib and rib steaks, it's really expensive. The short rib is kind of an off, not an off cut, but it's not part of the, of the main primal system. It's got incredible flavor. It's got incredible marbling, but it also has a lot of halogen that needs to be broken down. That's what, once you break that down, it becomes gelatin. That's what gives you that really lush mouthfeel. And it will eat, it's got a nice, nice chew to it. I think that's what I like about it, is that, I mean, a lot, steak, it's, steak has its own quality, right? It, it ha, but I think what's good about short rib is it's a little fattier and chewier. Yes. I think that's what you're gonna see here. We're eating for four, but it's just the two of us. <laughs> It's like when they plop down the steak in the steakhouse, they warn you, like, don't touch this. I think yeah, you I shouldn't think it, touch this. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's, Koreans can touch it. <laughs> this is actually stone right here. Oh, this thing oh is stone. wow. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, you can see the crack. Stone right bowl. And what's cool is that basically it, it, the sauce will continue to reduce. This is it. This is the only thing we ordered here. And this is what... <laughs> it looks like you ordered everything. I mean, what else could you, you what could you need? I honestly, I've been thinking about bringing you this dish for years, so I'm super excited. Well, listen, I'm very happy that you think of me in this way. <laughs> it's so interesting, it's so tender, like a braise. You're putting a bit of a crust on the outside. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a piece of stew, which like kind of just So it has a mild apart. reaction? Careful. <laughs> The commenters are gonna get upset. <laughs> I had this dish at my wedding. I mean, this is the ultimate, like, I mean, this would actually only be reserved for kings. Kalbichin is the pinnacle of Korean, because it's like, who can afford cattle in the, you know, mid 1500s in Korea, except unless you're the king. So, in modern day Korea, this is like the ultimate dish you can bring out and be like, I love you and I want you to have the best. So it's like a status symbol. Totally. It's like the American porterhouse. The yeah. Peking duck, right? Yeah. I don't find this actually to be searing, but of course we've done, if you've watched my show, The Meat Show, we've done a... <laughs> <laughs> I've done like jerk seasonings, and yeah. I think those are much more abrupt and sort of much more upfront, and they kind of linger. I like this because it is, it does, it's not insubstantial, right? You can tell it's yeah, got some I mean, it adds but flavor. You can, but you can taste the beef, right? Yeah, and that's exactly. the thing, like we don't want to mask the flavor of the beef. All right, so this is kimchi. Yeah, this is their traditional um, Napa cabbage kimchi. And this is these are sort of like Korean chives. So they give you um, almost like a stalk of a, of a green onion. Good crunch. Mm, mm. This is sort of like the ginger at a sushi restaurant, right? right. You're like, oh, I want to go back to the- It's like a palate cleanse. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's so refreshing. Okay, what's this? So this is a Korean daikon radish that's and also been be fermented. Spicy? It's not going to be too spicy. 
Mmm, but vibrant. Yeah, I mean, it has, if anything, a little bit more of that acidity. This is, is much more of a nurturing issue, something that your mother would give to you after coming home from a hard day at work or a hard day, you know, in the winter time. Korean barbecue, I, I love it. Don't get me wrong, they like that seared beef, but there's something about this, when you cook meat slowly over time, it develops these really profound layered flavors, right? It does taste more like a, like a, a roast or like a, a stew, but at the same time, because of the flavor profile, you have this really like this nice acidic punch from the peppers. It's you don't get tired more. of eating it. I mean, don't be afraid to have some carrots. It's okay. Wow. The carrot transformed, apparently. It ha <laughs> this is bizarre. It tastes like cilantro almost. Like, I don't know what what's going on there. Mm. This, to me, ranks in, like, the upper echelon of short rib cooking and preparation. It, it's unquestionably a beef dish, right? Yeah. It's just as satisfying from a carnival's point of view as eating like a big slab of short rib at Black's barbecue or eating like, you know, a sous vide thing from some fanciest chef in the city. This is my secret weapon. I well, bring listen. People to K Town. Boom. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys want to see more of my K Town adventures. Forget that. You should watch the meat show. <laughs> I mean, how that much... was the first father and son trip. I had a very good upbringing yeah. and I ate very well. Yeah, and I take full credit for that. <laughs>